we're live that the xenophobic attacks the detailed xenophobic xenophobic you know what i'm saying i don't know what 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 plans that is but it's leaves right hello hi miniano if you're new here hi um if not welcome back to my channel my name is namamo and somebody's a little pedal happy downstairs but we're going to ignore it you welcome back to another episode of books and a beat that's a series that i run on my channel where i review books written by african authors in a makeup look and sometimes an outfit inspired by the cover of the book i realize that i've been saying sometimes an outfit for the entirety of the series and all you ever see is like above my bust i i'm not sorry because i don't have the setup for the things that i'm envisioning yet just hang out eventually you know we'll get there and it'll be great okay thanks today we are talking about the book evening primrose was written by Dr. Kopano Maslowa. She is a South African writer slash academic slash medical doctor slash. The slashes and hyphens are endless. While I was looking her up to understand the motivation for this book, I realized that the 24 hours we are all using it very differently. And so I, I personally must reassess what I'm doing. The plot of the book follows Master Chaba's life in the form of diary entries. So we read it as entries in her diary that she's writing to God as a way to pray or to confide in God while she's going through some monumental changes and some difficult mental health moments. Most of the book, apart from like a small portion where Canada is mentioned, is based in South Africa and it's based in like the mid 2010s. So the 2010 decade-ish is when this is set. The main catalyst in the story is an uprise of xenophobic attacks in South Africa, so in the city that she lives and it just follows her navigating that. So the entries are divided into four parts and in these four different sections of her diary, we meet the people in her life and we are privy to like life-changing encounters that she has within this very volatile period. This book, when it was initially published, was called Period Pain, but somewhere along the line it changed and it became Evening Primrose. If you do end up reading the book, just be aware that there is a content warning for sexual assaults, there's a content warning for xenophobic attacks, mental health issues, just like very delicate situations and issues that we should be more careful with taking care of and speaking about. Today's look as usual is inspired by the cover of the book. My blouse is a light pink to match the background of the cover of the book and going into more detail on my eye, there is, there's supposed to be a matte white in the inner corner that's supposed to match up with the bands of text on the cover that detail the title and the author's name and then the rest of it is like a hot pink because a lighter pink wouldn't have worked as well as I would have liked it to. Um, my lower lash line is green to refer to the leaves on the cover of the book. And then my upper lash line is lined with black to match the text on the book. My jewelry is simple and silver. I'm realizing now that it kind of matches with the whites because silver whites. My necklace, this is like the third time we are seeing it. My mom got it for me. It shifts between purple, blue, and green. I'm wearing it as a callback to the green on the cover. Okay, so characters. The very first character that I'm going to talk about is our protagonist. She's called Masi Chaba. She's a young doctor who's battling depression, um, fatigue, burnout, and just what I would describe as an inescapable joie de vivre. Ellie, in the book, we learn about her having like really heavy periods when she first started menstruating and how inconvenient it was for her. The struggles that she and her mom went through to give her as normal a life as possible while working around this and her eventual access to a medical procedure that reduced those symptoms significantly. While she was getting that procedure, she saw a doctor being treated by another doctor and that was her reason for wanting to go to medical school and becoming a doctor. At the time that we meet her in the plot, she's lost her brother who she described as her only friend and so this is the beginning of her depression and her unhappiness, I would say. In her own way, she tries to stay close to him, but she's shamed for that. 
and this shaming is one of the reasons why she starts writing this diary. Apart from suffering from burnout and depression, she also seems to be struggling with the crushing bureaucracy of the system that she works in. Throughout Master Chaba's diary entries, we see that her faith wavers. Yeah, sometimes it's strong, but for the most part, it's a lot of questions about why things are happening and why things can't be better. Later in the plot, there are quite a few huge changes to Master Chaba's life, and so we see how those questions kind of fade out of her cadence in the diary and are replaced with more hopeful, accepting introspections. I feel like the questions that she asks and the insecurities and the fears that she battles are not uncommon especially among like young professionals who are just breaking into their industries and trying to figure out what it is that they're supposed to do and how it is that they're supposed to make a living of these new things that they're learning and practicing the second character that i'm going to talk about is nyasha nyasha is masichaba's roommate and colleague at the hospital she is zimbabwean so she's considered a foreigner and that's important like in the middle and towards the end of the plot because of how the xenophobic attacks unfold and how uh, Masichaba becomes involved with the situation around those attacks. She read as very callous, very abrasive, very outspoken, a touch callous about Masichaba's um, struggles with her mental health and just generally understanding what her place and function is as a person in the society. Apart from her brother, Nyasha is Masichaba's only friend. And because Nyasha is her only friend, we see how important their relationship is to her and we see why the progression of their friendship affects Masichaba so strongly. At a point during the attacks, their relationship is irreversibly changed. And the third set of characters that I'm going to talk about is Masichaba's mother and the nurses that she works with at the hospital. Now, Masichaba can be seen as like a neutral person in the way that the plot unfolds, whereas Nyasha is part of a, the marginalized group that's being attacked. And then Ma and the nurses are part of the group that is doing the attacking, the marginalizing. So the attacks detailed in the plots are a result of unrest among the South African populace because of the growing population of foreign Africans and foreign nationals in general and the widespread notion that the presence of all these foreign nationals is the reason why native South Africans don't have jobs, don't have access to social welfare services that they need and so these sentiments are the reason for which these attacks happen. Ma and the nurses are very much in this school of thought. They chastise Masai Chaba for being friends with Nyasha, for living with Nyasha for sharing things with Nyasha in public and that would be bad enough if there weren't also accounts of the nurses being abrasive to foreign patients. They're speaking their native languages to these patients who are in distress and need clear and accessible help so that they can figure out what it is that they need to get better and that's just the depth of dislike for foreigners within the community within the society. Okay so the very first theme that stood out to me was working through disillusionment. Master Chaba seems to be going through a very deep depression and she's unmotivated to work but quite apart from that she's underpaid, overworked, under supported and without the proper mental health support that she needs she's just not with it at all. She's doing her work trudging through her grief and her mental fog, doing the bare minimum to keep her job and nobody seems to notice that this is what's going on. We see her struggle through multi-layered personal tragedies and their inescapable weight. The second theme that stood out to me was what happens when opposites collide. So there are two different opposites I'm thinking about when I say opposites colliding. The first set of opposites that are colliding is Masi Chaba and Nyasha. Nyasha is very opinionated and almost militant about their blackness, about their work as doctors, about their place in pushing forward for their race, for their gender, for their progress as African people who are coming out of colonization apartheid. And Masi Chaba is just not that person. My good sister is barely here okay she goes that's the bare minimum is barely awake comes home writes in a little diary goes to bed wakes up does it all again reading how Masai Chaba sees Nyasha is very interesting because you can see how a very extroverted presence like Nyasha would grate on Masai Chaba's nerves and highlight just how different they are from each other the second set of opposites is 
is Master Chaba and the mother and the nurse. They are of opposing opinions concerning the presence of foreigners in South Africa and very different dispositions of how to engage foreign nationals in South Africa. Master Chaba is not with the violence, not with the anti-foreigner stance at all. She's more passive in the beginning and then she becomes more active. Whereas her mom and the nurse is just like people within that school of thought encourage the violence, they welcome it, they embrace it, they support it. The third theme that I've realized while reading was the general disregard for manageable situations until shit hits the fan until they escalate let's let's just just let's let's be proper because my mother watches this channel this disregard until escalation covers a couple of things it covers the xenophobic tensions that morph into actual factual social discrimination and then further morphs into physical attacks against people who are considered foreigners but it all also maps onto how Masechaba's internal turmoil is totally ignored until she really starts to go through it and shuts down and is submerged by her trauma like just the multiple layers of trauma that she's been living with we've come to the point where I talk about the interesting things that I found while I was reading there was quite a bit of Sesoto dialogue in the Plot. and you know me you know I love that second thing there are distinct differences between the four divisions of her diary as things start to pick up and really fly off the handle her entries become shorter more repetitive more erratic the tone is angrier more direct more abrasive and that just really speaks to her inner turmoil really picking up you know the tempest within just Sorry, I had a literature girl moment. I'm sorry. That's basically what it is. In the first division, things are calm-ish. The entries are long, longer than they are in the second and third portions. They are more insightful to her background, to her surroundings. The second and third, as things progress, we notice that the entries get shorter and shorter. They are more focused in the now and the immediate past. They're just very fraught with anxiety and tension and anger and fear and sadness and confusion. And then the very last portion of the diary, we see that the entries start getting longer again. It seems that there are also fewer of them in number. The tone is very calm, the content is very introspective, and we get a sense of acceptance of the past and what has happened and there seems to be even like a hint of hopefulness for the future for more more reasons than one yeah that's really it i think evening primrose is very similar to we need new names and that it's a very barefaced story that is all that i have for you regarding this book today i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like comment subscribe share i'll see you in the next one bye